So as a short introduction, my name is Facundo Tuesca. I'm a senior security engineer at Trail of Bits. We're a medium-sized security consultancy. We do not only security work, but also research and open source engineering work. Uh, we also have a very active technical blog. If you're interested, you can check that out. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So this talk is divided in three big sections. The first one is, what is trusted publishing? The second one is, uh, what problem does trusted publishing solve? Why would you want to use it? And the third one is, how does it work? The technical details. So what is trusted publishing? Trusted publishing is a way of uploading, pack uploading packages to PyPI. Um, since this is a beginner talk, uh, yeah, I'll give a bit of context because not everyone is familiar with PyPI. PyPI is the Python package index. It's if you ever if you have ever installed a Python package using pip install and the name of your package, that package then was downloaded from the internet, and the Python package index is where that package was stored. Uh, so if you're a maintainer and you want to provide your packages to everyone, you would upload them to PyPI. This is what it look li looks like. Uh, if you go to pypi.org, you can search the projects, you can create an account if you want to upload your own package, etc. So trusted publishing is a way of uploading packages to the Python package index. Uh, but before we actually see what's, what it is about, let's see first an example of the usual uploading workflow. The usual uploading workflow requires the user to create something called an API token. An API token is like a password that gives you permission to upload to your PyPI account. This is what it looks like. If you go to PyPI and you log into your account, you can create this token. Uh, don't worry about this token, it's like a password, but don't worry about this one in particular because it's no longer valid. But this is the token that you will then use to upload your package. So once you have the token, you can build your package and upload it. Uh, the first two lines here just run a command that generates the package artifacts that you would want to upload to PyPI. Then on the third and fourth line, we specify a username and password. When using API tokens, the username is always the same. It's the, that underscore token underscore string. And the password will be the API token we generated on the previous step. Once you have set that, you can run the command twine upload. Twine is uh, the standard command line utility to upload packages to PyPI. Uh, and you specify the path with the artifacts you want to upload. Once that's finished, then your package is then available on PyPI and anyone who runs pip install and the name of your package will be able to download and install it. So this is the uh, manual traditional way. There's another way um, where you use a continuous integration job. This could be, for example, GitHub Actions. This is used by a lot of uh, Python package maintainers where they have on their repository uh, continuous integration workflow, which triggers on, for example, a new release mate if, the, if they push a new tag for the package. Uh, when they do that, a new workflow is triggered, and that workflow will build the package automatically and upload it to PyPI. Oops. There we go. So this is uh, an example of what that would look like, the workflow definition for the GitHub action that uploads the package. Uh, as you can see, we define a job called PyPI Publish. We set the, the name and the, the, the image we want to use to run it. And on the steps, uh, here I omit some steps where we would retrieve the files we want to upload. But then the important thing is that final step called Publish Package distrib Distributions, which uses a pre-made GitHub action called GitHub Action PyPI Publish, which takes in the last line a parameter called Password. And this is where you would insert the API token you generated on the first step. Um, as you can see here, we're using an environment variable. This is usually stored, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, it's not an environment variable, but it's exposed as an environment variable in the job by the GitHub secret manager. And, and the, yeah, the key thing here is that the user needs to grab that PyPI API token from PyPI, copy-paste it into the GitHub secret manager, 
and then it's available on this, uh, when this job is run. So that's the important part. So we're having some technical issues. Uh, so as we said, what is trusted publishing? Now that we know uh, the usual workflows for uploading packages to PyPI, we can say that trusted publishing is a way of doing that. It's useful for continuous integration workflows, such as GitHub Actions, GitLab, and a couple more we'll see later. And the key thing is that we no, we no longer need to manually manage these API tokens with trusted publishing. So why? Why would we want to get rid of the API, the manually managed API tokens? Uh, why would you use trusted publishing? So as we saw, the usual workflow requires the user to manage these tokens. An API token is a secret. It's long lived, which we'll see what that means in the next slide, and it's manually managed. So the fact that it's secret means that it can be compromised. It's like a password. It needs to be protected as such. It's long lived, which means that if it is compromised, then whoever uh, managed to get it can utilize it until the owner of that token realizes that it was compromised and manually revokes it. And as all long lived uh, secrets, it can be forgotten about, uh, which is also a problem. And it's manually managed, which means that it's, it can be more easily compromised due to user error. Uh, as an example here, it would be the user accidentally committing the secret as plain text in their source repo. And it's easy to overscope. An API token can have uh, different permissions for which package is allowed to upload. And you can select a single package, but you can also overscope it and say, this token has permissions to upload all of the all of a single user's packages, which is usually not a, a good practice. So how does trusted publishing solve those problems? With trusted publishing, publishing users don't need to manage API tokens. So what we had before here were in this GitHub action, we specified manually this token, which was then uh, accessed from the GitHub secrets manager. We can just remove that and this will work and we'll, we'll see how that uh, works later. But yeah, we can basically just do that. We need to add a couple of more lines here. Uh, we'll, also, we'll also see what that's about. But as you can see, there's no longer a secret that needs to be managed by the user and copy pasted from PyPI to uh, the GitHub's secret manager. So how does that work? How, if we're no longer uh, using an API token generated by the user, how does PyPI authenticate the uploading uh, job that GitHub tries to, to accomplish. So the first step is the user goes to PyPI, they log in into their account, and they configure something called a trusted publisher. A trusted publisher is basically a configuration that says who is allowed to upload packages uh, to that uh, specific PyPI account. For example, we can say a specific continuous integration workflow inside a specific GitHub repository will be allowed to upload files for a specific PyPI package. Once a trusted publisher is stored and saved, uh, from that moment on, any publishing jobs coming from that GitHub Actions uh, repository will be able to successfully upload packages. They will, be, uh, they will have permissions to do that. And they won't, uh, there's no need to provide uh, for a user to provide an API token. This is what the UI looks like if you go to PyPI on your account settings and you uh, fill in the, the different fields. So first you select which uh, continuous integration service you want to use. Currently we support GitHub, GitLab, Google, and ActiveState. Uh, this is called an identity provider in the, um, one second please, yes on OIDC, which we'll see what that means later, but you select this first, then you configure your repository, basically the username or organization name and the name of the repository. Then you configure the name of the workflow that is allowed to upload packages. In this case, we just use a generic release.yaml file. This will be the file inside the repository that has the workflow definition for uploading packages and optionally an environment uh, name, which is uh, a feature that GitHub offers to uh, have more segmentation on the permissions on who is allowed to run a workflow or not. After you click add, 
uploads generating, generating from that specific workflow in that specific repository using that specific environment uh, will be aut automatically authenticated. So as we saw before, the, the workflow definition, this will be the release.yaml we saw before that has uh, this API token. We can just change this and remove that, uh, that line. So how does authentication work in the, in the background? Authentication is based on OpenID Connect. Uh, OpenID Connect is, if, you've, uh, if you have ever used um, single sign-on, like um, instead of setting a username and a password on a website, you click uh, sign in with Google, Facebook, or any of the other big providers, you, uh, that uses OIDC in the backend. It's a standard for identity, for identity verification, basically. So the first step is the GitHub job, after building the packages, but before trying to upload, upload them, generates something called an OIDC token. An OIDC token is a JSON web token. We'll see an example later. Um, but yeah, it basically has information on, on the workflow and the repository that is running this job. Then the GitHub job sends that OIDC token to PyPI. PyPI verifies that the OIDC token indeed is coming from GitHub or whichever is the continuous integration service. It verifies that the OIDC token has, uh, is coming from a repository that, have, that was previously configured as a trusted publisher. And if it passes all of those verifications, it will return to that GitHub job a short-lived PyPI API token, which can then be used by the GitHub job to upload uh, the packages. So let's visualize this a bit because I, I understand that it's, uh, it's hard to, to see without a graphic. So first we start with the user and PyPI. The user here will be the owner of this my package repository. And it will be the owner of the same package on PyPI. So that user goes to PyPI and creates a trusted publisher for that package. This is the same thing we, we saw before. They will fill this form and click add. Once that's done, as we saw before, from that moment on, the GitHub repository is allowed to upload to PyPI. Then the user triggers a release workflow. This can be done manually or automatically, depending on how the workflow is defined. Uh, but yeah, think as the user maybe pushing a new tag for the repository with a new version. So GitHub triggers that workflow, and first it builds the release artifacts, the packages we want to upload to PyPI. One moment, please. Yes. So after the, pack the artifacts are built, it generates this OIDC token. The OIDC token is basically a JSON file. It's signed by GitHub. Um, some of the important fields we can see here are the first one there is the uh, contains the repository name and the repository uh, organization or username. Con uh, the second highlighted line is the release.yaml file, the one where the GitHub action is being run from. It also includes the repository ID and the owner ID. Uh, this is useful for preventing a class of attacks called uh, account resurrection attacks. Uh, if we have some time at the end of the talk, uh, we can go um, a bit over what that is, but yeah, those are inclu included there for that. And finally, we have another important field, which is the issuer uh, field, which is a URL that defines who is the one generating this token and signing it. Uh, in this case, that's the URL that Git all GitHub actions use. Uh, GitLab has its own URL, Google Cloud has its own URL, etc. So GitHub generates that token, which contains the, the information of the workflow and the repository that is trying to upload packages. And it sends that to PyPI. PyPI tries to verify this OIDC token. So how does it do that? First, it grabs, it takes that issuer URL, the one for GitHub. Uh, it checks that it's on a whitelist of um, expected URLs. So right now we expect URLs from GitHub, GitLab, and Active State and Google Cloud. And if so, uh, it can access the a well known URL which contains the OpenID configuration. This OpenID configuration it looks something like this. Uh, the important field here is well, they are all important, but the one we're going to explain now is the this URL here, which contains the contains GitHub's public keys at this point in time. So PyPI goes to that URL, 
gets the GitHub, uh, gets GitHub's public keys and checks the OIDC token signature against public keys. This basically allows PyPI to verify that the token is indeed coming from GitHub and there was no one impersonating, there was no one else generating that token and trying to impersonate GitHub. If that verification passes, then PyPI checks that the identity claims we saw before, like the, the repository name and the organization name and the workflow name, they match an existing trusted publisher, the thing that the user created previously on PyPI. If it does and a trusted publisher exist, exists, then PyPI generates a short-lived API token uh, that, is, that has permissions to upload to that specific Python package and it returns it to GitHub. So now GitHub has a shortly PyPI APR token that's only valid for 15 minutes. So ideally, it will only be used for the duration of this continuous integration job. And then you can finally use it to upload the packages to PyPI. And this is basically the whole flow of how uh, authentication happens from the moment you initially configure the trusted publisher to the moment the artifacts are actually uploaded. Uh, note that the first step, the one where you create the trusted publisher, you only need to do it once. You don't need to do it for every upload. This gets stored on PyPI, and then from that moment on, any jobs from that GitHub repository will be allowed to upload pack the package. Sorry? One, one workflow per site. Yes, sorry, uh, one specific workflow inside the repository. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, now let's uh, recap recapitulate, knowing what we know about how that works. Trusted Publishing is a way of uploading packages to PyPI for continuous integration workflows without needing to manually manage API tokens. As we saw before, authentication happens automatically between PyPI and GitHub or others, other continuous integration services. These were the problems we have with short-lived manually managed API tokens. So, as we saw before, there's a secret that can be compromised. They are long-lived and they are manually managed. So with Trusted Publishing, we solve uh, a lot of those issues. The user does not need to manually manage secrets anymore. Authentication happens automatically. The process uses short-lived API, uh, short-lived tokens, both the OIDC token generated by GitHub and the PyPI API token returned by PyPI. By PyPI. They are both short-lived. Short I believe the OIDC token is 30 minutes and the uh, API token is 15. An hour. An hour. Thank you. And that means that if any of these tokens is compromised, they will only be useful for a small window of time, and there's no risk of the user forgetting that about them after creating them. And it requires a simple one-time configuration, the, the one we saw before, uh, which means there, there's no need anymore to copy-paste secrets between PyPI and the continuous integration service. And the configuration for the trusted publisher guarantees a minimal API scope. The a trusted publisher will only generate API tokens that are allowed to upload to a specific package, uh, whereas before with an API token, the user could configure it to upload to all of the user's packages, which is usually something we don't want. So what are the security considerations of this model? The OIDC tokens generated in the first step by GitHub and then the PyPI API tokens returned by PyPI are still sensitive material and should not be uh, disclosed. The fact that they are handled automatically makes it harder to accidentally share them, but it's still possible. And then configuring a trusted publisher uh, requires a trust relationship uh, with the GitHub actions, uh, the GitHub actions job or the continuous iteration job uh, being run. So, yeah, that state must be protected um, in this case, for, as an example, it would be basically configuring permissions correctly so that only maintainers are allowed to run the publishing jobs. One second, please. The good news is that if your project already uses GitHub Actions or any other CI workflow to upload packages, uh, those permissions should be already in place and there's no new thing that you need to trust in order to use Trusted Publishing. There's a security model uh, doc in the PyPI documentation if you're curious about uh, yeah, all of the details. Uh, these, these are the two big uh, things, but we have more 
Uh, also, we have pair provider security models, so GitHub is different from GitLabs and all of the others. And yeah, some final details, um, some history. The Trusted Publishing was initially rolled out in April last year. At that point in time, it only supported GitHub Actions. Uh, over the past 12 months, there has been a lot of work to add support for these other three, GitLab, Google Cloud, and Active State. Uh, yeah, a big thanks to Google, who funded a lot of the work uh, in the past year and also in the previous year for Trusted Publishing and to Dustin Ingram and all of the PyPI maintainers who designed and reviewed all of this work. Um, yeah, currently around 1,100 projects are actively using Trusted Publishing. This means that they not only created a Trusted Publisher, but they have used it to, they have used it to at least upload one uh, package, one, one file. And Trusted, this is something we didn't mention, but Trusted Publishing can also be used as a way to create projects. What we saw before was creating a trusted publisher for an existing project. You can create something called a pending trusted publisher for a project that still doesn't exist, and it will be created on PyPI on the first upload of your file from the continuous integration job. And yeah, we have a lot of documentation on how to modify your current workflow to use trusted publishing uh, on that URL. We have configuration instructions for the different continuous uh, integration providers the security model we saw before and how this is all implemented in the back in the back end. So yeah, uh, I'll leave you with these two URLs. The first one is the, the documentation we saw before. The second one is a blog post we have on our blog describing in a lot more detail uh, all of the, the technical details on how this works. And that's it. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Facundo. I guess we have plenty of time for the Q&A. So if you have any questions, yes, please are aligned near the microphones. Go. Hello, thank you for your talk. Um, do you have any experience with using trust publishers with GitLab? Yes. OK, so. Oh. <laughs> no, yes, <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry. Uh, because I was, I was uh, trying it out last week, uh, just the week before I talked, and I struggled with a few steps. I got it to work, but um, then maybe we can meet and. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, just to talk a bit more about that. Uh, the GitLab Trusted Publisher is very similar to GitHub's. Uh, you can specify the repository name, the uh, organization name, the workflow name, and the environment name. Uh, it has a couple of difference on the security model. For example, uh, there's no protection against uh, account resurrection attacks, as with GitHub, because of a how GitLab app API works when trying to get those IDs for a specific kind of repositories. Uh, but yeah, there's a tricky part for GitLab that's not uh, the case for GitHub, which is GitHub, with GitHub you can use pre-made GitHub actions, right? You can just copy paste that GitHub action name uh, by PI publish, and it will automatically take care of all of the uh, Twine upload and all of the uh, tricky things of exchanging the OIDC token with, for a PyPI API token. GitLab does not have this concept of a library yeah. of pre-made actions, so you need to basically do this yourself. Yeah, I did it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Okay. So in the documentation, we have examples of, of how to do that, which basically translates into uh, calling an API, calling PyPI API, PyPI's API <laughs> with your OIDC token and exchanging it for a PyPI API token. Uh, but yeah, it, it's not as trivial as with GitHub. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, hello, so, thanks a lot for the talk. That was very interesting. Um, I have a question, which is you have some private packaging which are using reusing some of the PyPI API, but not necessarily using PyPI. And how fast can we expect them to also have this type of infrastructure? So how open is the work that was done on PyPI and how it will be, re how can it be reused by other private packaging providers? Thank you. Yeah. So if I understand correctly, this is for um, non-PyPI indices, right? For private indices. Yeah. So the work is totally open source. There's no, <laughs> there, there's no, nothing hidden. Uh, you don't need any, any particular agreements with GitHub, GitLab, or any of the others. Uh, you only need to 
access that public URL, uh, that well-known URL that contains the configuration, and you can just configure or add the feature to your index to access that URL and do the verification yourself. Uh, but yeah, as to where will that be implemented by private indices, that's uh, up to all of uh, the individual indices. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, uh, for in case it, uh, it wasn't heard on the recording, uh, yeah, the GitHub action is in the index agnostic, so you can just specify the URL of whatever index you use, and if that index, uh, that package index supports trusted publishing, uh, it will be transparent, transparently used by the GitHub action to upload the package. Okay, so if there are no more questions, um, the final thing is the th small thank you card. Also, if you don't have any allergies to nuts, there is a small cookie. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you for presenting, and please give a final round of applause. <laughs>